In this lesson, we will learn what are the essential keys of a good composition in a digital matte painting. When you start a digital matte painting, you have a white canvas in front of you, and the first question is what theme you should choose, because by choosing an uninspired theme, the subject can be boring and the layout can be dull. But by choosing a good theme with a great visual storytelling, you have an awesome matte painting. And even if it's a futuristic or medieval setup, nighttime or daytime, the best approach is to have a good storyline. Therefore, you should consider using some of the basic rules of composition in order to have a good visual storytelling. So let's go through each one of them and see how they can help us to achieve a good visual language. The first thing to consider in a visual representation there are three types of basic shapes circles, rectangles, and triangles. And each one of them is associated with different feelings. So the circular shapes are the organic one. Therefore, they are looking very familiar and friendly to us, no matter if they are objects characters or nature elements. So here in this photo, the circular shapes of those trees gives you the feeling of calmness and purity. The rectangles, unlike the circular shapes, are made of straight parallel lines. So we will associate it with stability, balance and protection. And in the middle photo, the buildings give you the sense of security and protection. The triangles can be mystical but they also make you feel unsecured. And here the sharp cliff edges give you the feeling of unfriendly and unsecure environment. So the next ones are the contrasts. And first we will talk about the color contrasts and in the landscape photography and matte painting, the most used is the warm and cold contrast. It will offer you that color richness which can help you achieve great and dramatic results. So it works in both night and daylight scenes and they can help you enhance and focus on the main subject or can give you the right support of your visual story. The next contrast is the shape contrast. It will give you more variation in your shapes, as we can see here in this beautiful Louvre Museum photo, or in this outdoor marketplace, or here in the last one, where the shapes contrast between the tall buildings in the background and around the tree and water lines works very well and gives us more richness and enhance the visual language. The next one, the next one is the rhythm. So we can see in these photos, the placing of those elements offers you a certain visual rhythm, just like in music. By seeing repeating elements with different placement or sizes, it will create a rhythm that will allow the viewer to understand the image and to read the composition more easily, as we can see here. All these photos are nice examples of how you can make your image sound like the music with a certain pace and tone. Now, let's talk about depth. The more depth you have in a landscape image, the more information you will have. Therefore, your image becomes more interesting and will give you that feeling of greatness. Depth, or aerial, aerial perspective, it's caused by the air density that will affect a distant object, altering its color and details. So the more intense the atmosphere is, the nicer this effect will be giving a feeling of mystery and drama. The scale is our next subject. So by using scale in our composition, will also help you establish some important relations between the elements in your image. Let's take, for example, this photo. We can see the rounded stone, but we only realize how big it is when we see it in relation to the goat near it. In the second image, we have 
the same scale relations between the castle, the cliff, and the boat. So we can see how big the castle is, or how the tall how tall the cliff is, when we see them in relations with the boat. In the third image, we can see how the tall the cranes are by relating them to the building from the bottom of our image. Next, we will talk about how dynamic image can make our composition look more interesting. On the left we have an almost flat image with one point of perspective where the building is parallel to the horizontal line, but in the photo on the right side, just by changing our position with a few meters on the left, we have a dynamic image with greater depth and more volume information. Same here, we can see how static is the image on the left side, because the main pro composition lines are horizontal and dull, but by tilting the camera to the left, we can make it more interesting and dynamic. Next, the flow. Why it is so important? Well, because a nice flow will help us go through the entire composition guided by the strategic placement of some elements until the eye reaches the main focal point of our composition, as we can see here on the left. In the middle image, see how our eye is guided by those rocks and will go up until it reaches the main element enhanced by the color contrast 2. And in the photo on the right, see how our, our, our eye gets into the composition from the left bottom side and goes to the right side guided by the direction of the car and goes up on the building and then goes back and until it reaches the main focal point just around here. So it's very important to have a nice flow in your composition. And this is can be also achieved by applying the rule of thirds, which consists in dividing our image into nine equal rectangles, as we can see here, and place our elements at the intersection of those lines, intersections that will define the four possible focal points in our image. Those points will help you maintain a certain balance and will give you to your images a, an interesting look. As we can see here, this, this statue is placed inside of the last three rectangles, giving more space to the castle on the background to be revealed our, as our main center of interest. Here is an old matte painting of mine and I want to show you the composition construction lines and guides that help me make it balanced and interesting. You can see how the eye is guided to the focal point by following the lines formed by the elements placed just in direction of the road of those red lines. As you can see, they go from the right, uh, from the left to the right, to the center of the image. So in this lesson, we've learned how to, to, to use some guides in order to make a, a great composition that will help us make great matte paintings. In the next one, we will set up our subject.